the nervous system it's for you grade 9 it is chapter 20 in your book this is section 1 so we're talking about the nervous system the nervous system acts as the body's central command post it has two basic functions first of all it gathers and interprets information this information comes either from inside your body or from the outside of your body as the feeling of heat or as the feeling of fear whatever the information coming from the outside or from the inside it is processed and dealt with through your nervous system your nervous system is divided into two parts a central nervous system and a peripheral nervous system the central nervous system is formed of the brain and the spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system is all parts of the nervous system that are not the brain or the spinal cord. The, they are all the nerves, they are all the neurons, they are all the receptors that are present all around your body. The peripheral nervous system connects all parts of the body to the central nervous system and it uses these specialized structures which are called the nerves in order to process and to deal with different types of information. Let's take a look on the basic unit of the nerves. The basic unit of the nerves is the neuron. So, the neuron is a nerve center that is specialized to transfer messages in the form of fast-moving electrical energy. So, the messages are transmitted is the, in the neuron. The neuron is the basic cell in the nervous system. The neuron is a typical cell with a, a few differences that make it more specialized. First of all, it has the cell body, and this cell body, it contains a nucleus and it contains cell organelles. What makes the, new, uh, the neuron different are these parts, the axon on one end and the dendrites over here. So, we have a neuron, which is the basic cell for the nervous system, and it has a cell body, which contains the nucleus and the cell organelles, and then we have these parts that make the neuron different. These dendrites are the points that receive information from around the neuron. These are very tiny branches that are arising from the neuron and they allow it to collect information. Whatever the information collected from these dendrites, it is going to be processed here within the cell body and then it is going to be transmitted, whatever the response, it is going to be transmitted in the form of impulses through this axon. So dendrites collect information and they get it into the neuron and the axon it takes the information away from the neuron. The impulses are carried away from the cell body by the axon. The axons are elongated extensions of a neuron. They can be very short or quite long. Some axons they extend almost one meter from your lower back to your toes. The end of an axon often has branches to allow the information to pass to other cells. The tip at each band is branch is called the branch terminals. Here they are, the terminal and fibers. So what about the information collection? As we said the, that the neurons are a type of nerve cells. Some of them, they are sensory neurons and some of them are motor neurons. The sensory neurons gather information about what's happening in and around your body. They have specialized nerve endings called the receptors. These receptors, they are going to detect the changes inside and outside the body. And then as these, this information is collected, the neurons that send impulses from the brain to the spinal cord and the spinal cord to other systems are called motor neurons. So first of all, we have sensory neurons that collect information about what's happening in and around your body and then we have motor neurons that transmit impulse and this impulse is most probably going to be a form of movement. For example, the muscles that make you squint, whenever you are in a very lighted area, you tend to close your eyes a little bit. This squinting movement is transmitted by First of all, the sensory neurons that are present in your eye sent the impulse to your brain that there is so much light here. And then your brain sent the impulse to two parts. It sent the impulse to the muscles that are surrounding your eye and it also sent impulse to your iris to decrease the amount of light that's entering your eye. So it was a sensation that led to a movement. For example, you touch something very hot. 
the sensation of heat was sent by the sensory neurons and the response which is the movement was sent, was accomplished by the motor neurons so we're talking a lot about the neurons how about the nerves the nerve is a collection of axons that are bundled together but the nerve is not only neurons the nerve also contains blood vessels and some connective tissue the nerves they are present all around your body there is not a single part of your body that doesn't contain nerves so so we said that we have peripheral nervous system that is formed of every single part of your nervous system except for your brain and the spinal cord and we said that the central nervous system is formed of the brain and the spinal cord the peripheral nervous system is connecting your central nervous system to the rest of your body it has two parts the sensory part and the motor part okay so it, you also know that the motor nerves carry the central nervous system responses to that, sens uh, to, uh, to that sensory information. To carry those responses, the motor part of the peripheral nervous system has two types of nerves, somatic and autonomic. So we have peripheral, uh, central and peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system has sensory and motor parts. The motor part has two types of nerves, somatic and autonomic. The motor part has two types of nerves, somatic and autonomic. The somatic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is every movement that is under your conscious control. So you can move your arm, you can move your leg, you can move your head. Whatever is under your control is somatic. While the autonomic nervous system, it doesn't need your control. It was res responsible for your respiration. It's responsible for your circulation. It's responsible for your digestion. So, somatic means that, it, that you control it. Autonomic means that it's not under your control. The autonomic nervous system has also two parts. Part that is called the sympathetic nervous system and called, that is called uh, and the part that's called parasympathetic. So again, we have central and peripheral. The peripheral nervous system is divided into sensory part and motor part. The motor part has somatic and autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system has two types of responses. A response that is that what we call is fight or flight and a more relaxed response. So one of them is called the sympathetic nervous system and the other one is called the parasympathetic nervous system. So it, these two are part of your autonomic nervous system. Now we're going to talk about the, f the, the formation the f of your central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord. We first of all, we're going to go to your brain. Your brain is the main control center of the nervous system. Many processes that the brain controls, they happen automatically. These processes, of course, are called involuntary. On the other hand, some other actions that are controlled still by your brain are called voluntary, but you have to think about it and decide to do it in order for them to get done while your respiration your digestion your blood flow these happen outside your control the brain has three main parts the cerebrum the cerebellum and the middle we were going to start with the first part with the cerebrum which is the biggest part of your brain looks like a mushroom cap okay and it's present within your front okay and it's divided into two parts. Each one of them is called a hemisphere. We have right hemisphere and we have left hemisphere. The right hemisphere is controlling the left side of your body and the left hemisphere is controlling the right side of your body. Then we have the cerebellum. The cerebellum is the second largest part of your brain. It lies beneath the back of the cerebrum. The cerebellum processes sensory information from your body such as from skeletal muscles and joints and it allows your brain to keep track of your body's position the cerebellum is very important to keep your balance whenever you're losing balance it is up to the cerebellum to keep the muscles of your body in a certain type of movement to make sure that you return to your balance and then we have the medulla the medulla is at the end of the formation of your brain and it connects it to the spinal cord 
okay so it's the part of your brain that connects to the spinal cord it's about three centimeters long and the medulla controls all the involuntary processes such as the blood pressure body temperature heart rate and breathing your medulla constantly receives sensory impulses from the receptors in your blood vessels and it uses this information to regulate the blood pressure to regulate your sweating to regulate your respiration whatever needs to be regulated finally we have the spinal cord the spinal cord is part of course of your central nervous system and it's made up of neurons and bundles of axons that pass impulses to and from the brain the spinal cord is, 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 is protected by the vertebral column as we said before each important part each important organ in your, in your body is protected with some bones as your brain is present in your skull your spinal cord is present in your, in your vertebral column lungs and heart are present within the chest cavity they have to be protected by bones because they are viral organs the nerve fibers in your spinal cord they allow your brain to communicate with your peripheral nervous system the sensory neurons for example in your skin and muscles they send impulses along their axons to the spinal cord the spinal cord carries these impulses to the brain so in case of spinal cord injury it's going to block the information to and from the brain the sensory information coming from below, below the injury may not get to the brain for example spinal cord injury may block all the sensory impulses from the feet and leg people with such injury will not be able to sense pain touch or temperature with their feet and motor commands from the brain to the injured area may not reach the peripheral nerves so remember the spinal cord is a very important communication between your brain and your the rest of your body so whatever in injury that happens in the spinal cord it is going to affect the parts of the body that are below this level because this means that the information coming from and that the information that is transmitted from the brain to this part are going to be blocked this is all for the introduction to the central nervous uh, to the nervous system and next time we'll go to the rest of it and how it's communicating and how it is controlling homeostasis.